Well, hello, and welcome to the channel. As you can see by the label on this box, we have the Bamboo Lab A1 Combo 3D printer. Y'all, uh, it wasn't long ago, uh, I did a unboxing and assembly of the Ilgu uh, Neptune Pro 4. I think it's actually Neptune 4 Pro. And we put it together, and uh, I've got a couple little quick clips of some of the stuff we printed. I think it's been going pretty much non-stop since we've had it. In fact, it's running right now in there. And uh, I caught the bug. I'm really enjoying 3D printing, and uh, the, some of the stuff that I printed, I've actually designed myself. But anyway, uh, we heard about this printer here and it's supposed to be the cream of the crop so uh the fact that it can print multiple colors the it comes with a system that will hold four different colors that's pretty cool so let's take this thing out of the box this did cost uh, a little bit more money than the you Elgu Neptune, but I really, so far, I really like that printer, and I really haven't had much problem out of it. I have dealt with a few clogs, and thought that was my fault because I'm still learning. Uh, but I resolved that situation. And I really enjoyed training with it, and I've learned a lot. And of course, I've got a lot more to learn. But this one here is actually going to be a little bit more newbie friendly. Uh, I do have a little bit of CNC background, CNC machines. So, uh, this is kind of the same, you know, you've got your X, Y, and Z axis, and your uh, G codes, uh, stuff like that, your CAD, and, you know, it's just kind of similar. So I didn't have a, a lot of problem picking it up. Man, there's 12 year olds out there 3D printing. So, I mean, this is something if you think you want to do it, go for it, man, you can do it. So let's see here what we got right here. I don't know if I can... I may have to put this box in the floor. This thing is just a little bit heavy. Looks like it's all bundled up together. I'll tell you what, let's open the plastic. I have a feeling they have that made where you can get this whole thing out of there. We're just going to rip into it. Maybe do it the hard way. They're going to have to set the box down in the ground. So, uh, let me set this box down. It has some nice bubble wrap. And this lid is taped the Field plate. Instruction book. Well, that is tape good. Where is it now? So it's build plate, looks like an instruction book and some. Extra cardboard. Now everything is packed very well. Now you remember, this is the kit. So it has the multiple filament spool holder machine. And this is the first on top of the box. So this is the actual stand. And then you have the toolkit. 
that has uh, T hound Allen wrenches, some lube, a razor blade. You, you build the, you 3D print the handle for that and some other stuff in there to put this together. These are swatches of the different color filaments they have. And then you have, these are the contraptions that the filaments gonna, the rolls are gonna slide on. And I think until I need these, I'm gonna leave them in the plastic. That's the only thing left in here. I'm just gonna set this aside for now, where it's safe. And we have another thing of foam. And it's got everything packed in like this. Looks like it just lifts out. This, I have to get the instructions to see what's up and down. But this will fit in here. I said I just have to Make sure I got that facing the right direction. You have a power cord. You have the extruder catch. I'm not sure what the terms to all this are. This is your other auxiliary uh, filament roll holder. That is all that is in here. So we're gonna set this out of the way. Now we're getting to the big stuff. Next up, make sure I grab this the correct way. It's gonna be your machine uppers. bottom it's not all that heavy let's see what else you got in here you have the tubes that will go from your filament holder to your extruder head some extra filament A big old super dry pack. I keep these packs and put it in the box that I store filming in. Let's see here. I think we got everything out of the box. Packed really well. Yes, that's everything that's in the box. There are cables. Tape on there. We're going to untape it from on there. Now I'm going to move this filament holder out of the way. We don't need it right now. I'm also going to move this other roll holder out of the way. I'm going to grab this tool kit. We're going to get the instructions out of here. Let's see, I think there's tape on there. The fill plate. We're not going to need it right now. Just 
disclaimer and safety guidelines, warranty leaflet, and quick start guide. I have watched a few videos on this. Uh, and I, it should be one of the simpler ones to put together. And as I take this tool kit out, it's just going to be in this box in a plastic holder. Through Bamboo Labs, you can actually go and print you, you get the, S, the file, it's an STL file or uh, I don't know if it's a GGO file or whatever, but you get that file, you print you a real box to hold this. Let's see what I'm doing there right now. But we've got our T-handle, all of our screws and bolts, they're all labeled. You've got your grease, your nozzle cleaners, and I'm going to pop these T-handles out. Those are also 3D printed T-handles. Smaller one out. I don't think I need none of this other stuff right yet. Now, uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to cut all this stuff off here yet. I think I'm going to leave that support in that because I know that we have to flip this over. On its back. See, you got your red. We gotta take those bolts out. One, two, three, I see four. So we're gonna lay this over without hitting our screen. And that looks like the bigger Allen head wrench. So we're gonna remove these. Holds everything in place during shipping. And we're going to lay these aside. Definitely a different setup than the Ilgu. Diff definitely a different setup than the Neptune 4 Pro. So those are out. Those are the only ones I see that look like they need to come out. Now we're going to flip this back over carefully. And this slide that back. This is going to pop up and pull out. And then you see all these green we're going to be putting bolts in all that and they're going to go into that so what we need to do is set this over onto that and that's the front so let's see let me get rid of this
Get everything out of the way here. There is a square cut right here that's going to fit around this motor. So you want to be careful there. I'm going to say tilt it down this way. And then run it down. And there is a plug on that motor. So let's make sure we ain't sitting on it to where the brake. Everything's good there. Now we need to put the screws in these green hose. This is, says for the base housing. This says for stiffener. May have to get the instructions out again. This one says for top mount latch. This says for the AMS stand, which is why I moved. <coughs> this is for the scraper that you build. This is for the AMS. This is for the purge wiper. So all the screws that we need to put in here should be in this bag right here. And you know me, or you may not know me, but zip bags and my hands do not like each other. Okay, I got all these. We're just gonna dump all of them out. Looks like they're all the same. So everywhere there's a green circle, I'm gonna put one of these in, but I need the one that I had. Just get a few of these started, make sure all of them line up. I know y'all can't see what I'm doing, but uh, this is all marked, and you just do what, what it shows, really. And I'm just kind of starting these a little bit. If I get them all in.
Okay, let's see. Got one there, one there, 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 there. Did I put one? No, I put one in this one. I think I did. No, I did. All right, now I'm gonna snug them all up. So I'm gonna pause the video, and once I get them all snug, I'll get back with y'all. Okay guys, after you get these bolts in the back, holes that have green circles around them, push your table back, and there's two more that you will put in from the front side. They also have green circles around them so you know which ones to do. Let's go ahead and start this other one. Now, I'm just kind of doing this from memory of watching somebody else do it. And there's quite detailed videos on YouTube. I know mine's not going to be just real fine details. But you'll get the, the idea. I'm going to go ahead and check these. They were already in there, but they were a little bit loose. That's all I see in there. So, as far as I know now, we're ready to put this plate back in. There's no more, nothing that I see that you have to access. No plugs or anything like that in there. So, it looks like this is going to slide in from the back. You're going to line it up with the slot up here. Once you get it in the slot, that holds that up, push down on the back, and we're together again. Now we're going to have to flip this thing over on the bottom. So let's get our little foam thing here. Let's slide this back a little bit. Just like this. So on the bottom, we're going to take this apart here. plugs, there's a USB port there, there's a screw in that already, and they're color coded. You got green and white here. So obviously you got green and a white there. And it looks like this is just going to pop in these these tabs are going to go into those tabs. So it looks like there's also a screw hole there. I'm thinking this has to be plugged in there. There's a, a USB plug up in there. Get there where I can see it.
see if y'all can see this a little better. Like this. Plug right in. Uh, let's see, that looks like this. Maybe the smaller Allen key for this little boat that's right here. Maybe the bigger one. Yes, yeah, the bigger one. What did I do with that one? Okay, right there is the little one that I covered up. Come on, y'all, what did I do with it? Y'all was watching me, right? Tell me. I covered up. I need this. And there it is right there where I said. Alright, now I got the right one. So let's pull this back. I'm gonna kind of support this bed. I'll just pull this back and forward. Now we can tighten up this bolt. Um, not too tight, but just enough. Now we can plug in these cables here. Green will definitely go into green. I may have to get with my little needle nose. No, I think I can do it. Okay, there's green. Here's white. Now we go in there one way. So, there's another plug. Z, the Z motor. That'll be this. In fact, I bet this says Z motor. It's got an orange tag on it, so that is going to go into there. And They've got it taped with this stuff here. I don't want to leave that on there. I'm going to peel it off. Now, there's a little door here. First, there's a, a clip here that you feed the wires through. Okay, then you're gonna open this little door and you're gonna slide that into the door. Just like so. And then flip it shut. And then orange will go into orange. I think it goes this way about here. Okay, that's plugged in. Now we're going to push that down a little bit. Work this up in over here a little bit. All right, now it's all out of the way. So all of our plugs here are plugged in. This is screwed in, clipped in, our wires running up here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my key and just make sure all these are snug. So I'm gonna move that one a little bit, move that one a little bit. Check these. Mm. 
Right. Check all these outer ones here. Did I check this one. seems good so we should be done with the bottom of this This is your power wire. And it will, what is this sucker plug? Let me turn this thing around. But I really probably shouldn't undo this until I get where I want it. But I'll flip this around. You can see that your power plug is going to go right here. And then there's your on off switch. Not sure what that is, I have to do some research on that. And then your bill plate. You want to clean this up before you try to use it little dish soap and water and alcohol. Now what's cool about this one, let me turn this back around. Get this out of the way. On the Neptune 4 Eligu, you will butt your plate up against a piece of plastic that's here and then line it up to get it on there. This one, you actually have a guide and you will slide it into this guide against the guide. And that's it. You're lined up is where it needs to be. So let me get some scissors and clip all this stuff and break it loose. Okay, I got some little baby clippers. Cut these loose. up here. Hope my little baby clippers can cut it. Protected the finish against the zip tie with that film. Let's see, I'll just do this from back here. Same on this side. You protect the plastic to keep this from rubbing the paint job. Then we got these big mama hummus. One, two. And this foam can go. There is also plastic protecting those. And these are routed through some holes. So let's see, let's pull this one out first. And then let's pull this one out. And we'll do this side. So far, nothing hard at all to putting this together. Take this 
foam out. Plastic. This out. And this out. Some of my trash out of here. We got some plastic all up in here, so we're just gonna push that over a little bit and zip tie holding that on too. It's like I can get a hold of that right here. Get rid of that. Anything on this side? Yes, I do. Right here, we're gonna take this loose, and it's also got the plastic protecting it. Now I think we are clear of everything that is on there. This is actually going to go on that other part of the machine. As far as I can tell right now, this is together. Okay. We have green here. I don't know that I put screws in right there, so we're going to... Yes, I believe I did. make sure. Yes, there it is. I can have one extra. All right. So, let me clear some table space off. Stuff I don't want going there, stuff that I'm hanging on to. Bunch of bolts here. I'll hang on to these screws I took out of that, but uh, I shouldn't need them. There's the extra one. Never know when you might need an extra one. Be one more of those others somewhere. And we got our tools here. I'm just trying to kind of get everything somewhat organized. So I'm gonna scoop this over a little bit. bring the stand back in here. Okay, now it says to install the purge wiper. And that's going to install right up here. So it's going to slide in to the back like this. And there should be a single screw for it. Yes, for a purge wiper. So that is your purge Wiper. Basically that it's going to serve the purpose. Basically, I would compare it to toilet paper. 
Get the right one. You have a single bolt package is labeled. And you're gonna go up so I can find the hole from back here to the bottom. Maybe I had it pushed up in there too far, you think? Not in the best position to be trying to just like this. But what it was I had pushed it too far forward yeah we're in there now it's got a lock tie on it it looked like So we're threading through that Loctite. It feels like it's tight, but it's that locked out, I'm pretty sure. Now that feels tight. Yep. So the purge wiper is installed. Put the AMS light body on the stand, cable on the upward end. So that explains that. Secure the AMS light with the four BT36 screws for AMS stand from the accessory box. So we're gonna find the bag that says AMS stand. AMS stand. How to fight with the bags. So the cord goes to the back. You gotta line these holes up. I could spin this around and show you all on the other side, but it's really obvious. Oops, got the, that one can go on the other side. It's really obvious where these go. Let's 
spin it around to the jaw. There's just two, there's one right here. Well, there's four total, but two on each side that I see. There may be some in the bottom too. We'll see in a minute. May just be an extra. Look, nothing in the bottom, so it's just those four. So now we need to put the actual spool holders on. There's two of them. There's two more of them. Okay. And you notice you've got two kind of orange and then two green. Some people might call it yellow. And then over here you have a orange or yellow orange or yellow, a green, a green. Also, in the ends here, octagon and a rectangle. So this is be a green rectangle. You can see the rectangle up in there. So it'll go in there. I don't want to force it quite yet. You see, that's the octagon. That's the octagon. And that's an octagon. It's supposed to be two octagons. Okay, you get pushed a little harder once you get lined up. There they go. Greens back on the bottom. Let's take this one. Got it. Kind of like that. Just like that. And then we got that one. There. And those are on. Okay, now it's wanting to install these tubes. Now, I'll install the tubes on this, but I'm not going to put them in that yet because I need to place these where they're going to go. This is not where they're going to stay. And I don't want, once I put them in there, I don't want to take them back out until I build the tool that goes with this that you can get from their site to make it easier to remove and install those uh, tubes. So this will be like this. And you're gonna have two long tubes, you're gonna have two short tubes. Which only makes sense. Even these up. And you see there's two short, two long. Now, you know the long, they're going to go on the outer side here, the further side. So you're going to want the longest to go to the further side over here too. Now I will read and make absolutely sure. But yes, the longest ones are going to go on these. Basically, push, push them in and then pull. 
Of course, man. Man, yeah, cool. do the same over here. Long ones will go in these two, short ones will go in these two. But I'm not going to do that here. And then the plug to this back on the back is going to plug in of course to the back. Of this and there's only one place, where well, there's two plugs back here, but one place for it to go. I'm also not going to plug that in. I will flip this around and show y'all. But you can see the plug here and here. That plugs into there. And then, uh, you know, your filament spools will just slide on to this. I have a Bamboo Lab spool on the way. It didn't get shipped the same time this did. And uh, the spool itself has a uh, chip in it that this machine can read. And it tells the machine exactly what filament it is and sets all the settings. So basically you put their filament in and you're ready to go. Now some of the other filament rows uh, you need an attachment, and you can make that also, uh, like Sun L. Uh, the hole's a little bit big, so they make a adapter that you can be 3D print, and I'll have to do that because we have some Sun L filament, but that's all in time. Uh, basically, uh, I think we're about done uh, with this printer. When it changes colors, it's going to purge the previous color you were using out. That's what this is. And it's going to shoot it out. So there's a catch bucket that you can get on their website and print out, and it'll fit right there and it'll catch all these pieces. Every time you change color, it will purge out the previous color. So you're going to have more waste with this machine than you would a single color machine uh, or one you're, you're changing the colors maybe you're doing layers and you're swapping the colors because you kind of control how much you purge out but uh, that's neither here nor there really because this is just the nature of the beast when you run one of these i'm going to end this here we pretty much got everything together uh you know we'll have a clip here with the extra clip that when this comes over here this will kind of hold that up out of the way but other than that I mean we're together the next part of it is plugging it in and getting everything set with this and that'll be uh, uh, another video there are other videos already online about this but I just wanted to show you how I put this together and uh didn't take too long i didn't get in no hurry uh, i did everything basically from memory except for a few of the last things and uh was really easy and you remember i'm a newbie at this so uh yeah this is gonna be a lot of fun i hope you all enjoy the video don't forget to subscribe and uh share our videos with others and uh soon we'll get this print and we'll show you all that um, i'm gonna go over the It'll give you Neptune 4 Pro some more. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we made successfully and some of the scrap uh, that wasn't made successfully and talk about some of the things I've learned and some of the most important things I think that any newbie 3D print person is going to have to learn and uh, figure out. And once you do, you got a basic idea of everything uh, 
with the different filaments and the different prints. Uh, but you got to learn some of the, your CAD, you got to learn your uh, stitcher program for your prints, your, learn about your infills and uh, nozzle wiping. And, oh man, there's just, there's a little bit to it. And, but if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. And I'm still figuring it out, but follow us along on the journey. So you can see how easy it was for me and y'all can do it too. Thanks for watching. Let's get 3D printing. Okay guys. I got everything set up. I'm not using this multi-color system. Right now I just have a single roll of filament up top. Hopefully it won't fall off. And I'm fixing to print the first benchy. I've already went through all the setup. It did the self-leveling stuff. Uh, okay, so I just wanting to run the AMS. Now I just told it to do the external spool. And we're going to load it. We're not using ABS. We are using... PLA. I don't think it's high speed. Okay, I just pulled the tube out of this, pushed the filament in there some more, and now you can see, hope you can see there's white filament in there now, coming out. I gotta get my basket made for this. find that. Okay, it's heating the nozzle again. Heard you no know, filming again. Now I would think it would start printing. It's a lot of film coming out. Load complete. I shouldn't, I didn't have to do that. Let's just go back. Now we're going to the benchy. I guess we hit play.
It's not gonna pause. Yeah, I heard the fan kicking on. Oh, so it's leveling again. Getting that old filament off the nozzle. Like it's getting ready to do its thing. Definitely different setting up and going in the bamboo than the illigu. All this leveling that it's doing now on the illigu, I did with rollers or wheels underneath the table, got it very close, and then it ran a self level. This one, everything is automatic and boy it takes a little bit of time but hopefully once it gets it it's good to go Imagine it's heating up right now. And there it goes. Looks like we got a good two lines crossed there. And it's going to do this little benchy in 14 minutes according to the timer. The thing I'm going to do is watch my roll up there and make sure it don't roll off their little arm. Sucker's flying. Now I will say on the Illigu, we also printed a Benchy successfully on the first try.
very first thing I printed on the Bamboo Lab A1. Since we have four minutes left. This is the speedboat. Now if y'all can hear it, the fan noise you're hearing is on that Illigu. I have the auxiliary fans running, so they're pretty loud. But boy, they cool. Our bed on the A1 is, I believe, two inches bigger than the bed we have on the Illigu. Neptune 4 Pro, but I am seriously thinking that we need the EDU Max, Neptune 4 Max. I believe it's a 12 inch bed, maybe bigger, maybe a 14, I don't remember now, but it's bigger than this 10 inch bed. Ten minutes left on the bench. Seven minutes left on the bench.
Now I didn't record it, but before I started printing on the bamboo, I did remove this plate and go in there with the uh, oil lubricant and lube the slides, put the cover back on. I used the lubricant oil across this rail and then I used the lubricant grease on the z-axis up inside there. They do recommend that you do that before you start printing with the machine. Five minutes on the bench. In case y'all are wondering, I do have this room bended to the outside. The first thing I'm going to print for the Bamboo Lab is the catcher to catch all the waste filament that this kicks off. I will print these out of the white and I'm not using AMS because I'm using a single color and I just figured that uh, instead of putting wear and tear on the AMS I'll use the top spool holder. Seems to be working okay. It is moving quite a bit. Oh, my screen disappeared. I believe if I touch it, it comes back. Four minutes on the bench. Here. Three minutes on the bench. Two minutes left on the bench. We are recording this in real time.
One minute left on the bench. There you go, folks. Looks like it's purging a little bit of extra filament out of the nozzle. There's the speed benchy. Looks pretty good. S stuck really well on there. I'm going to have to take the plate off to get it off, but did a great job. All right, we're now printing the poop chute, the waste basket for the A1, and I'm not really going to record it all because it's going to take a while. But uh, made some adjustments on the filament because it was starting out too hot, as you can see. But uh, we got it cranked down a little bit. It's going to be better now. We'll show you the results. All right, this is the first successful prints off the Bamboo Lab A1. Actually, it's the first two prints, period off the A1 and you can see they both turned out very good. Nice and smooth. And we got the Ergu Neptune 4 Pro still going over there.